Thank you so much. Um, we want to make sure that you don't miss anything that you would want to hear due to technical issues. I want to first of all, first of all thank you for inviting me to be here um, to this um, uh, Navigating Agriculture Through Water Energy Food Nexus. I was uh, glad to see that uh, Dr. Searcy is here. Where are you at? Can you raise your hand? I remember Dr. Steve Searcy, and, uh, uh, but I promise you he doesn't remember teaching me a thing. Uh, I was not the most remarkable student at Texas A&M uh, in ag engineering, but um, I did go and had lots of classes in Scotts Hall, and I enjoyed it very, very much. I graduated, I was telling them earlier, I graduated in 1983 uh, with the full intention, well, I started with the intention of going to work for Halliburton, they were hiring lots of ag engineers in those days. In 1983 I graduated and I went out there and they'd locked the gates and laid everybody off and there were two jobs to interview at Texas A&M which probably has the largest placement center for engineering in the world. One of them was a job working for an irrigated farm in the valley and the other one was a job for working with CPNL. And of course, we all interviewed for that. And Jeff Strachner got that job, and he still works there to this day in the engineering at, at, uh, at CPNL. What I wanted to visit with you about a little bit this morning in my role <clears throat> is uh, what I think the government's role in this nexus could be. <clears throat> and first of all, though, I want to thank you for caring enough about it to have this meeting. Uh, agriculture, people don't care about it as much as they used to because not as many people make their living in it as they used to. And as long as the food's on the shelf, well then people don't worry about it too much. And my role as the chairman of the House Committee on Agriculture and Livestock is to try and get the appropriators in the state of Texas and the business community and the banking community and the general public to recognize the tremendous role that agriculture plays in their life, whether they know it or not. But over the next many, many years, you know, if you see your handouts, it says we're going to be feeding 7 to 8 billion people by 2050. Of course, that's, that's worldwide. In Texas, we don't care about the rest of the world. Um, <laughs> and so it um, obviously is a very, very difficult decision. And I don't feel like I'm qualified, certainly, to give you a lot of insight into it. You've got some of the brightest minds in the state here in this room that work on these issues involving water and energy and food. But I do think that in order to be successful and keep it as painless as possible, that the state government and the federal government and local governments to a certain extent, to a great extent, actually, have a role that they can play to be beneficial. And the, uh, you know, you've got your scientific community and you're going to have your investment community making decisions in the banking community, but the government has a role. And I believe that the role for the government in, is to help pick the winners and losers and be cognizant of the fact that the people who have the least votes oftentimes are the ones that stand the most to lose in these types of ventures, when you, particularly when it involves water. And I've, done, I've worked on a Natural Resources Committee for 20 years, and so that's something that I, I tend to be more familiar with. But you have to understand that the rural communities are increasingly losing their ability to speak for themselves and to have influence in the Texas legislature because of population shifts, because of legislative redistricting that comes along every, every 10 years, just the natural progress of the thing, you're going to lose some rural seats every single time you redraw all the lines in the House and the Senate, particularly in the House. And that's just, there's not anything you can do about that. That's a numbers game and that's the way that it works under the current redistricting laws. And I think that the government has a role through legislation and through statute to recognize that any time that you move a resource to the place where it's perhaps most needed, which people will tell you is the population centers, whether it be water or electricity or food, any time that, that that moves, it's moved. And it's moved away from someone and to someone. And that seems very, very simple, but we lose sight of that many, many times 
in the legislative process because people say, well, that's where all the people were, so that's where all the resources need to be spent, and that's where all the money needs to go, and all the water, and all the energy, and all the food, because that's where the people are, and that's the only thing we need to be concerned about. And I believe that the government, the state government, has a role in recognizing and protecting the interest of some of the people where those resources may be originating. And certainly, and I think the universities can do that also. But, um, and that is one of the big roles that I think the government can play. Now, I will tell you that in my view, and, and not everybody agrees with me on this, certainly, uh, I've sat there on the Natural Resources Committee for 20 years and watched legislation and water districts and things be fought out and the push and pull between agriculture and rural communities and urban communities. And I have concluded there's just a lot of this stuff that we're not smart enough to figure out. And 50-year uh, water plans, long-term planning for the grid, the electric grid, a lot of these things, in spite of our very best efforts, and we're certainly grateful for the grant monies that we use in order to do the planning, and we're certainly grateful for the jobs and positions that we generate when we do it. But at the end of the day, when it's all said and done, a lot of this stuff you just can't predict. We would have never predicted when I first started in the legislature that 50% of the water used in Demet County, Texas, where I grew up, was going to be used for drilling oil and gas wells because irrigated agriculture was using the water in the city of Carriza Springs and some of those smaller municipalities. You can't predict that stuff. You can't plan for that because nobody expected that. Now, I can tell you that we're grateful for it, but we didn't expect that. And who knows what's out there? I've, I've often talked, I've told Robert Mace before, I said, I don't know, I, we don't know whether we've ever seen a drought of record. You know, if you do some studies, they tell us that there's been some real droughts 500 years ago when you look at tree rings. We just think we've seen a drought of record. So there's a lot of things that we can't predict, and we assume that we're going to have population growth, and that is a valid assumption based on history. But there are countries in this world that have had generated zero population growth. Now, it's much different philosophical leanings than we have in this country, but who's to say that if someday we can't, that it won't be the case in, uh, in some other place in this country, too. Uh, we assume that we're going to have increasing usage of our resources, and I think that's a good assumption. But I've always said that long term, the sustainable solution is more efficiencies and more conservation in energy and in water. And the average public today has no concept of what real, real conservation is. Now, those of us that grew up and spent a lot of time on a farm or ranch where you had to haul your water, uh, you understand conservation. You understand that you don't put but that much water in a bathtub, and the little kids get to use it last. I mean, that's what we understand, and people don't want to do that, and they don't want to think about that, but there is a lot of things that could be done if you have to, and that's the key is if you have to. And people are going to eat, and they're going to drink, and they're going to use energy. Uh, no matter what we do, no matter what plan we come up with, this stuff will work itself out. But it could be a brutal and ugly, ugly process. And I believe that that's the role that those of us that are in a position to help planning, and each of you in this room, your role is to make sure that that process is as painless and as fair as possible and soften the, the process because, I mean, you, we could do nothing theoretically and it will work out somehow. You may have a die off, you may have a starvation, you may have a disease, you may have people that are forced to all bathe in the same bathtub or not bathe at all. You may have people that are forced to only use electricity for four hours a day. I mean, it will work out one way or the other, but we don't want to live in that type of place. And that's the role that, that's why we have to plan and have seminars like this and take them seriously. Take them seriously to try and achieve those goals and, and keep that going. Now, you know, some people say that the uh, 
I mean, a lot of people say, uh, you know, we may have a rapture before we ever get there. But we have to plan nonetheless. And so that is the role that I think the government can play, the biggest role that they can play, is they can provide funding for these types of programs, and they can maintain interest in, in planning and, and make sure that the guys with the most money don't win every time and the guys with the most people don't win every time. And that's what I think that the role of the government, the state government in particular, can be in this nexus process. And I know that each and every one of you in this room are going to have a role to play, and I just think that we can soften that blow. And that's not necessarily a very profound message, but my job is to give the welcome remarks and not the final remarks. And so I appreciate you for inviting me very much here today. I'll be around a little while if anybody wants to visit with me, ask me any questions. And I want to thank each and every one of you for being here and caring enough about this issue to, um, to show up and give it some serious consideration. Thank you so much for having me this morning.